Hi there, Linda Goodall here. This question has come up several times in some of the various Facebook hatch groups that I'm in, so I thought I'd answer it with a video. Now, some software does have a built-in feature to let you add knockdown stitches to any design. My old software didn't come with that, and Hatch doesn't have it either, but it's not hard at all to knock off knockdown stitches, so that's what I'm going to show you. If your software doesn't have an instant knockdown stitch feature, and you have the ability to create outlines, these steps should work for you and your software too. So in my old software, I always just digitized this knockdown stitch. I never even thought about having a button for it. And all I did was create an outline around the object and I put a light fill on it and I just called it a mesh background because that's essentially what you're creating. You're creating this light background fill that will act like a mesh to hold down textured fabrics like, oh, terry cloth or corduroy or even thick plushy fabrics like some fleece. And Hatch makes it very easy to create a knockdown stitch, so let's see how to do it. Here I have a fancy monogram, and let's imagine that I'm going to sew this on a terry cloth towel. If you've ever tried sewing something like this on a terry cloth towel, you may notice that the little skinny areas like this get buried in the nap. So the idea of a knockdown stitch is it's going to just extend a little bit behind. It's going to be a light, light little fill in the background, and it's going to be sewn in the same color as your towel or whatever and that way it becomes invisible, but it's kind of like that landscape fabric that you put down so the weeds don't come up through your little sidewalk or something. That's what a knockdown stitch does. Yes, you're probably going to use a water-soluble topping when you stitch on a towel, but remember, those are only temporary. It holds down the nap or keeps it even while you stitch, but once you wash it, it's gone. Having this knockdown stitch is a more permanent solution. So I have my design, it's going to select it, and from the Edit Objects Toolbox, I'm going to select Create Outlines and Offsets. So let's take a look at this dialog box. We don't want an outline. An outline is just going to put it right on the edge of the design. Instead, we want to do an offset outlines. And I've got mine set to 2.5, and that's a pretty good value for what I want to do. And I only want one. You can create like echo stitches with this, which is kind of cool, but we only want one. And as far as the stitch type, we're just going to keep it at a single run because really what we want to do is turn this into a fill. And we don't have any fill options here, so we just, we'll just do a single run. And we can pick any color. I'm going to leave it at purple because that'll make it easy to see what we're doing. And then I'm going to make sure that I have this one selected so it's going around the whole object and not just all the piece parts in the object. So we'll click OK. And there it is. And you can see that it's purple. And let's hide our letter. So I'm just going to click on the letter and hide it. And you can see that I have some of these really skinny areas. And I probably don't want to have those in there because they're not going to show, and they're just going to make the fill more complex. And I might decide that I want to leave these, which is going to make a, a few more steps in our design, but I'm going to show you some ways to make it easy. So now I want to select all of our purple. I'm going to change this to a fill just by clicking on the fill icon up here. And we'll just leave it at Tatami. And now I want to select just the letter, and I'm going to change that to a light fill. So I'm going to make it two millimeters. And notice that when I tab out of there, it automatically selects travel on edge, but we still have all this business going on. And that is our underlay. So all I have to do is go to the stitching tab and uncheck underlay. And now we have this nice light fill. But we still have these two things that we have to fix. And ideally what I want here is a hole. So I'm going to use these objects to create a hole. So let's select this one. Well, first of all, we have to have our letter behind this. So we can just click on it and drag it up. And I'm going to select this little guy here. And let's zoom in just so you can see. And I want to create a hole in the light fill that matches that shape. So you might be thinking, well, can I just do remove overlaps? Well, let's see what happens. So I'm going to select that, and I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to click Remove Overlaps. 
and if I move this out of the way, you can see I have a teeny tiny hole that's smaller than this. And the reason is because we said to remove overlaps. And when we tell Hatch that, it thinks, oh, I'm going to sew this object on top of this one, and I want to make sure that there's no gap between these two shapes. So here's a little trick. Now if you go up here, let's undo that. If we go up here to Software Settings and choose Embroidery Settings and go to the Overlap tab, you can see that it's set at one millimeter. This is the default setting. If I change that to zero and now do Remove Overlaps, what I have now. I have a nice pretty hole. So we can delete that guy. Now there's another way to do this and I'm going to use this as sort of a template and I want to lock it to make sure that I don't accidentally do anything to it. And now I'm going to go to the Digitize Toolbox and I'm going to choose Digitize Holes and we'll select our object click on digitize holes and now all I have to do is just click around this shape just like you would digitize an open shape and now if I hide that or yeah let's just hide it first I have a nice little hole there so there are two ways that you can get the holes in your object really quickly so let's zoom out a bit. I'm just going to press the minus key a couple times. There's our knockdown stitch. I should probably get rid of this guy so I don't accidentally sew him. Unlock, unhide, delete. We need to move our knockdown stitch to the beginning. So we'll just select it and move it to the back. Now I could also change my angle. So I'm going to press H to activate the reshape tool. And here's the angle line, and I'm just going to move it up so it's horizontal. And there is your basic knockdown stitch. Now, let me show you a few extra tips. Let's suppose you wanted to make this into a lace design. What we need for a lace design is we need to recreate the fabric that would support the design. And because once we wash out the stabilizer, we won't have anything to support the design. And this monogram is not made to be a freestanding design, so we need to do a little bit of work. So once again, I'm going to hide my monogram so we can see what we're doing. And I'm going to change the angle on this, do H again, and I'm going to make it oh, about like that. Control D, it's down at the bottom, let's move that to the top. and change its angle to that way. And now we have a nice mesh fill, but it's going to fall apart on the uh, edges, so we need to put an outline on that. So we'll select the second one, and we'll go back to our friend, the outline tool, create outlines and offsets. This time, we're going to create an outline. So I'm going to select outline, I'm going to select Satin from the drop-down. I'm going to pick a color. I could make it a different color, but we should probably match it, huh? And there we go. And I want it to go around all of the objects on the outside edge. So I click OK. There it is. You notice it's right in the right spot. So now all I have to do is turn on my letter. And there's my design. How fast was that? So yes, it's a few more steps than just clicking a button and saying knock down stitch, but we have a lot more options here. You have more control this way, and it's really not all that hard. Yeah, I showed you a few extra steps if you want to cut out holes and all that jazz, but you don't have to do that. If you're sewing this on a white towel and you use a white thread for the, where I've used the purple, it's not going to show in these teeny tiny areas. So you're perfectly fine there. So I just wanted to show you a couple extra features, and I hope you liked it. 
Thanks for watching and please like and subscribe and, and make a comment if you like this. Thanks for watching.